Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, first talk of track three, Black Hat. Uh, I'd like to introduce Dmitry Chastisin and uh, Alexander Boyshev, who will be presenting with Big Data Comes Big Responsibility, Practical Exploiting of MDX Injections. Thanks. Hello. OK. Hi, my name is Dmitry. Uh, this is my colleague, Alexander. We work in ERP scan company. Today, we will tell you about OLAP and MDX technology and how an attacker can compromise the critical data using this technology. As I said, my name is Dmitry. I work in the field of information security and in particular business application security. What's more, I and my friends are the organizer of hardcore security conference in Russia, Zero Nights. You're welcome. My name is Alexander. I'm a distributed system research. I hold uh, MHD works as auditor at ERP Scan, and I participate in the life of uh, Russian DevCon group. Okay, uh, sorry. My name is Alexander. I work at ERP Scan, holds a PhD. I'm distributed system researcher, and I participate in the life of Russian DevCon group 7820. Okay, the company we work for is called ERP Scan. We are the developers of ERP Scan security monitoring suite for SAP. And we conduct a security assessment of business application, embedded system, and mobile systems. We find various vulnerabilities in them and get acknowledgments from vendors, blah, blah, blah. What we'll speak about? First of all, of course, what is big data, all up technology, details about this technology, a uh, few words about MDX. Uh, language about attack attacks on the uh, MDX, and we show we'll show some example, some demo, and uh, and, and conclusion of course. Let's start. Okay, let's start. Now let's talk about what is OLAP and what is big data. Online analytical processing OLAP is an approach to formulate and answer multi-dimensional queries to databases. And when I say large uh, here, I mean really large data sets. OLAP technologies uh, are developed by many software giants since the end of the uh, 20th century, uh, and OLAP and business intelligence were initially developed to help top and middle level executives to analyze the information about processes and data inside and outside and around company. OLAP is, about, uh, is all about business intelligence and big data. OLAP is based on online transactional processing, uh, original and standard databases. Uh, while OLTP is about uh, business processing and business strategy, OLAP provides managers with information uh, that can be used for decision making and business analytics. Also, OLAP provides tools for data mining, for example, uh, DMX language. After first appearing uh, in the end of 20th century, the use of big data technologies gradually expanded to the several fields where analysis and decision making is based on large data sets. Now the most popular fields uh, to use OLAP and big data are advertising, especially online advertising, healthcare, energy, government, and retail markets. On this slide, you can see main players of OLAP industry. Uh, it's Microsoft with Microsoft Analysis Services, SAP with SAP Netweaver BV, Oracle ESS based and OLAP Services, SAS OLAP Server, IBM Cognos T1, Open Source ACQ Solution, and Pintaha Business Analytics. And there are much more solutions. Uh, many of these services can be accessed directly from the web, and uh, you can find them on Google using these docs. For example, with Google Docs, uh, Google Doc uh, Pentaha Business Analytics, you can find uh, many Pentaha user consoles with default passwords, without passwords at all, and others, others. And uh, you intentionally can find uh, some surprising big companies that are using OLAP, as you can see on the screen. So why are they all using OLAP? Imagine that you have a large data set about the supply of goods uh, structured in a simple table, as shown on the slide. What if the company manager needs to get consolidated data totals about suppliers arranged by company, uh, city, country, supplier? Uh, can it really be imagined in two dimensions, which is usually uh, used in OLTP databases? What will happen if we also need the information requested above versus customers or trade roads? Uh, okay, now we in four or more dimensions. Welcome to the OLAP and MDX world. Looks a bit crazy, yeah? Uh, now the cube idea will help us. Uh, the data is presented as three-dimensional or more n-dimensional structure. 
For example, this picture shows a cube which is created in accordance with data from the previous slides. It's actually four-dimensional, but I'm sorry, I'm not very good at drawing hypercubes. Uh, okay, let's now talk about language that allows us to make queries to such uh, cubes. Uh, what is MDX, multidimensional extensions? A lab stands uh, far from LTP, so using LTP languages such as SQL isn't convenient for accessing big data. So MDX was created to replace SQL in this area. You might remember that SQL was not originally intended for programmers. MDX2 was, created, was not created for programmers, but rather for managers and analysts. Ironically, in the course of time, MDX became even more complex than SQL. At a first look, MDX appears to be similar uh, to SQL, but it's wrong opinion. There are at least two main differences between them. MDX is much, much stricter than SQL, uh, much inconvenient to attacker, and usually you can't modify data with MDX. I've said usually because in some cases you can, but we will talk about it a bit later. Uh, this slide shows a standard layout of select query in MDX. Like in the square select is used in MDX to re retrieve a sample of data. The select is the main uh, object of MDX language. Uh, it does look slightly like a square, doesn't it? Uh, the query starts with the with section uh, which can define measures, objects, and members to be used in the rest of uh, the query. After that, the select section defines which dimensions uh, of the cube will be used in the resulting sample. And finally, uh, the from section defines which cube or subcube, if it's created by subquery, the data is to be retrieved from. It also defines filters and slicers. You can see a sample in the query on this slide. This query will extract information about the paid salary, which is described in the first dimension on columns, against male employers from the marketing de department, which is described by the second dimension on rows. Uh, here, a new measure uh, was defined in the width section of the query. In practice, measures can be more complex and even include subqueries in some cases. Uh, you can also use on one, on two, on three uh, without dimensions. Uh, the data is queried from the cube called HR and the widest filter is selected, all members of the store. Okay, now we've written a simple query. How it will be processed in big data system? As was, dimension, as was mentioned earlier, in the most common case, a lab is based on OLTP. When you uh, write an MDX query and send it to a lab server, it's picked up by MDX analyzer or interpreter. In Carvets, uh, the MDX query into MDX email query. We'll talk about uh, this XML for analysis a bit later. And send it to OLTP. OLTP can process the query directly or convert it to the set of SQL or some other, for example, no SQL queries. The resulting data is gathered and sent back to the application. Many LAP service works in the way it is depicted on the slide. Now we know enough to plan how we can attack MDX. Imagine that we have a vulnerable application that fails to filter user input and processes it directly, directly into some parts of MDX query. What are the vectors we have? We can attack MDX email with good old XXE injections and other fun XML attacks. We can use pure MDX injections to, to gather or even modify sensitive data that was not supposed to be accessible by vulnerable application. Also, or we can use MDX extensions, user-defined functions to expand the attack and even get remote code execution and other funny and evil stuff on the vulnerable system. Okay, now let's talk about how to inject. Uh, what language uh, features will help us in MDX injections? In MDX, like in SQL, there are two types of commentaries, single line, dash, dash, space, dash, and multi-line, slash, asterisk, asterisk, slash. Also, we can use subqueries to create subcubes in the front part of the query so we can expand our text. Uh, there are several built-in functions uh, that work in many dialects of MDX, and uh, with this function, we can crawl dimensions and re-engineer the cube structure. Uh, this function may be parent, default member, first child, uh, last child, and others. Uh, MDX injections are a bit different than a SQL. Uh, in a SQL, we, in most cases, inject into the select and where part of the query. In MDX, due to language specifics, the application can uh, insert user input into three different parts of the query, in most common cases, of course as shown on the slide, into the members definition, into the dimension specification, and into the where filter or slicer. Uh, so we have three possible types of MDX injections with possible results. 
if we have able, uh, we are able to inject into uh, present exception, we can do almost everything with the exception of data modification. If we can inject into the select section, we can gain partial information about cube metadata and gain access to unexpected and confidential uh, data. And we can also access other cubes, of course. Uh, in the where well section, you can only use blind in the injection, injections and we will show you how. And of course, you can call user-defined functions in any of these sections. Here is an example of simple MDX injection in, into the first section, press select section. The injection code is highlighted with red color and uh, the um, commented uh, the rest of the query with green color. Here we inject the code that will return almost all members of cube hierarchy. We are using special built-in uh, keywords of MDX such as dimension count, unique name, current member, and members, which will allow us to access cube hierarchy metadata. Another example describes the situation we, where we can only inject into the dimension specification of the select section. Uh, as you remember in the original query, the application specified, for example, with um, combo box, it can be displayed on the combo box, uh, the gender of an employer. We can inject into the queries with the value of this hypothetical combo box we, and we can slightly modify, modify the query so it will return not only the employer's salary but also system usernames or possibly passwords if it remains in the cube of course. This is not a rare case. Often the cubes and are created semi-automatically based on all TP datasets so passwords will remain uh, in all updated too. Let's talk a bit some cool features on, from DX that will help us in the process of injecting wires. First, as in many SQL uh, dialects, uh, you can start a multi-line commentary with slash and asterisk and you don't need to end it with asterisk slash. Also, you can uh, use dimensionless keyword to access cube dimensions and uh, lookup cube keyword provides you to access to another cube. And the descendants keywords help you to get all data about and around the member. And if you need to pass data between queries uh, and sub-queries through a different part of the query, you can use strings to, uh, string functions such as set to str or str to set and others to convert uh, members and uh, objects to string and from strings. Uh, also, there are uh, blind uh, MDX injections and we will show you um, a simple t technique. Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, the query that will return null when there is null login with this touching substring and something when it exists. Uh, you can use instr and the expansion to speed up the process and if you re-engineer the cube structure with uh, uh, blind injections, uh, you can use uh, less and greater operators uh, to uh, speed up the process. Uh, and uh, funny thing, in Microsoft Analysis Services, this is a correct in the query. Yes, it's correct and can be ran from a user with least privileges. Uh, so if you control press select or the beginning of select part of the query, you'll probably be able to retrieve all cube data and structure. That can also be possible in several cases when you inject in ISP.NET applications if they didn't use, uh, if they don't use LinkQ and using raw MDX. Microsoft always puts us in the position of this cat with uh, such features. Uh, so when you write application for Microsoft Analysis Services, double check the input data if you are using plain MDX queries. Uh, and uh, a couple slides about uh, data modifica modification. MDX isn't a square mm, and normally, normally you can modify data with MDX. MDX statements like alter, create and drop are designed for creating, deleting and altering temporary meshes and sets, not for changing cube data. But in rare cases, you can modify data with update statement. Here is simple update query where sales amount at the euro region is modified to 20. The worst thing in update is that it can be uh, sub-query or can, can start with, with statement. So you can inject data modification statements only if two condition is true. You control all query and data modification is enabled for your user. Now Mitri will tell you some more cool things. Okay. Let's talk about another feature of MDX query language is uh, user-defined functions. User-defined functions or UDF is it a function written by the user or for party developer which can take and return values in the MDX syntaxes. So a developer can use them to enhance the function of the language and the application which uses it. To call a UDF 
or user-defined function, this kind of construct must be used in a query. First of all, it's program ID, after that exclamation mark, after that function name, and his arguments. Uh, we will now discuss some attacks on OLAP servers where user-defined functions are used. ICQube OLAP server will be the object of these attacks. Why? First of all, it's a quite popular solution for OLAP servers. Uh, second, it has a free community edition, and finally, the solution is a cross-platform because it's written on Java. The developers claim it to be fast, reliable, and secure. Another advantage of this software is that it's shipped with a lot of utilities for developing and debugging queries, creating web reports, and so on. So, sum up the availability of this solution is why we have chosen it. This how work with an OLAP server looks for the end user. Fancy HTML5 diagrams and checkboxes, pretty cool interface, allow working with the multidimensional data, conveniently and generating queries very easily. And, and this is how the client working with OLAP look for anyone who looks into a sniffer. Of course, Indix is appropriate language to be used in queries, but it's not the surprising part. Uh, can you see the MDX parameter in the post request? Uh, it contains the whole MDX query. It means the attacker need not bother with searching for injection parameters and, and by passing filters, they just need to understand which queues measures members are there and compose the correct query. However, we are interested in uh, user defined functions right now, so we turn to them. So, and ICQ is Java application. Well, then maybe Java function will serve as user defined. Let's try to call math.pi using the common entry format. J as program ID after the exclamation mark and math.pi. Mm. You can see the full entry on this slide as well as the result. The server has successfully replied with the value of pi. Rejoice looks like we can call public static Java function. Let's try the uh, Obvious get property method. And here is the part where the, we got the, through our first fail. Uh, we got an unknown method error. And we tried a couple more cheesy functions and concluded that the developer had restricted access for MDX to all dangerous methods and functions and left to us just boring classes like a math. Uh, however, official documentation documentation uh, contains a sub subtle hint that much more of the math is possible if you add the desired classes to the server directory called lib. Uh, it was only logical to have a look at the jar files which we already contained in the directory and decompile them and find something interesting. And we find it. Uh, for example, uh, jar file commons uh, io1.4 contained a method read file to string, which allows us to read any file from the OLAP server. Okay, let's try to read a file called 101.txt, which contains text hello mdx. The text has to be displayed somewhere, so we will uh, cause a wrong dimension name error, and that's how we can read uh, the content from file. This slide shows the final file read query is a select statement uh, where we call uh, user defined function read file to string. And this slide shows the result of our works. You can see that the server returned an error. Uh, hello mdx is a nether a dimension not in hierarchy within the cook. We got an error uh, which contains the file content. But we don't, okay, we can, we can read the file from server. But we don't manage to read anything interesting from the server because special chested commas and even space crashed the MDX parser and only part of the file was transferred from the server. For example, if we try to read the file hello MDX uh, white space blah blah blah, we will get uh, error unexpected statement. And the solution is obvious. Uh, just encode the file content, for example, with base64. By the way, uh, we found a uh, method uh, encode base64 uh, and this, add this method to the query, send it, and here's the file again. 
uh, we got the error, syntax error, unexpected statement AQ. The base 64 string probably contains an AQ sequence, uh, which means equivalent in index. Okay, encode file contained twice and got the error again. The, the parser returned an error about a missed expression after the equal operator calls the symbol. Is the equal symbol is frequent in the end of base 64 strings. To resolve this problem, just concatenate the base 64 strings with which contains equal symbols with one letter and then expression will be correct. When index parser works, it drops uh, equal symbols and all symbols after that. But we know the equal symbols is always at the end of base 64 string, yeah, so we can still decode it. This is our final use defined function call, which allows us to read any file from the OLAP server with uh, any symbols. We call user defined function read file to byte array after that decoded twice by the encode base, base 64 and after that concatenate with one char set in our example is S. The server return replies with an error which contains a base 64 string. We must not forget to add an equal sign at the end and after that, we can decode the string several times and get the content of the file 111.txt from the OLAP server. This vulnerability is very interesting, very interesting uh, especially because user passwords in ICQ OLAP server are stored as base64 encoded string in configuration file uh, ICQ users. Uh, it is year 2013 and applications still store password in plain text. It's unnormal. And just before Black Hat, ICQ shut down the, those methods, but the mechanisms of calling those functions is flawed by nature and can be successfully exploited with the help of other critical methods. For example, we can try the, three, the user home directory where the official ICQ demo server is launched from we will use for that uh, method and costing and guessing properties from crazy dev uh, jar file, which still work. And again, we got the same error with base 64 string. And after decoding it, we get the necessary information about user home directory slash home slash demo free. Now I'll show you a small demo. Oops. Here is a, a web interface of ICQ server. We're logging in as demo users. And our goal in this demo is to uh, read a file config with stored passwords. And after that, login as administrator. Okay, now we're typing. Uh, Now we're typing a, a simple request, which returns an error about wrong name of dimension. And now there's a user defined function which returns a uh, user home directory path. Send request and we got error with uh, base 64 string. Now we decode them.
and we'll get a normal plain text. We need this uh, path because uh, ICQube store uh, config file in user directory. Now, we know this path and we can send a request to read the file with passwords. String because the string because the string several times and finally we get a configuration file with usernames, uh, passwords, role names. After that, because of passwords, and we can successfully log in as administrator. Later we can uh, manage users, create cubes, and configure the server. And back to the other presentation. Okay. But the, there is, is not the end of the adventure use the defined functions. Current dangerous uh, methods is only half of the problem. The other half is the method which contains certain vulnerabilities themselves. An example, there is a method called free space window, windows which return information about the hard drive space occupied by a, a certain directory. But look how it's implemented. <laughs> yeah. Our command injection is self invited here because the path parameter is not checked in any way by the writer, just concatenate to the dear command. Uh, the code of calling calculator, for example, is quite simple and elegant. Just call free space method and point calc exit. Let me show how it works. Again, uh, interface, national interface for the server login as demon users. And make a request. There we have a, a <coughs> process list from the server. And now we send uh, the request and got a calculator on the server. Very easy. Uh, you don't need any buffer or flaws or something like that. Just call user defined function. Here is if you can see. Uh, 
got successfully executed. Back to the other presentation. And okay. Now it's uh, more words about uh, UDFs. Uh, let's return to Microsoft, uh, which you, which we love more than ICQ, it's more secure. And uh, you can guess, uh, you can also use user defined functions in Microsoft Analysis Services. In the older versions of it, Price Query Server uh, 2005 Service Pack 1, you can use, use library keyword to load type libraries, ActiveX controls, and even executable files to load libraries with user defined functions. Thanks God, this functionality was removed in SQLite Server 2005. But in modern versions of SQL Server, you can still extend MDX functionality, uh, but now with third-party.NET libraries. After adding a library to an MDX project on this SQL Server, you can directly access them in uh, MDX libraries. For example, one of the most popular MDX extensions is Analysis Services Stored Procedure Project, ISSP, which vastly extends MDX functionality. For example, it provides an SQL query library that can be used in MDX for direct SQL injections with permissions of MDX users. Lazy developers uh, don't want to write their own extensions or learn MDX. They just use SQL query extensions, as you can see according to the uh, Google results. Uh, SQL Server provides some functionality and security system for third party libs to prevent unauthorized access and force them to run with least privileges. Great job, Microsoft, really, but who uses it and who creates multiple user for MDX applications? Most of developers are still too lazy. Very lazy. Uh, so if we can inject in where part of the query, as you can see on the slide, uh, and the SQL query extension is installed, as is uh, often case, we can do really evil, evil things, such as, for example, drop some tables or call some SQL functions, maybe XPIT and shell. Uh, there are also some third-party extensions libraries uh, that provide similar functionality. For example, for uh, SAS Lab Server, where SAS Help Query will do the same thing. And they also uh, seems to be actively used in the wild. And now we will part again. And I would like to leave M MDX alone for a while and introduce you to XML for analysis. Uh, XML for analysis, also called MDXML, is a standard which describes the capabilities of, of transferring MDX requests into XML messages. X XML A is based on XML, SOAP, and HTTP. XML A was developed to be as simple as it possible, so it only contains two SOAP methods, execute and discover. In accordance with the name, the discover method is necessary to discover which entities are present in the cube, what they called and how large they are. Within this method, the user may specify which entity of the OLAP server he wishes to know better. This is how typical uh, discover query uh, looks. The query includes the di directory name and the format and so on. This, this method can be most useful to know the names of existing cubes and determine the most interesting dim dimensions and methods of the, in them. This can show, show is a query to retrieve the names of the cubes presented in SAP ERP systems. You can see that the replies include the cube's name as well as, as information about the owner, update date and description mm -hmm. and so on. The second method, execute, is more interesting. It has two parameters, a command to specify the MDX command to all app server and properties to of course specify the properties like directory names, timeouts and others. The slide shows an example of SOAP request execute contains a request to measures which, which are present in all app server to call sales. Back to the attack now. XML for analysis is still good old XML, and all classic attacks are applicable for XML. For example, tech injection, XML external entity, XML bomb, XL stakeout injections. Uh, <coughs> let's study one of them using the example of the OLAP server and the XML service of the SAP ERP system. Uh, upon setting, if you send a request to the by the CRI to SAP, uh, we saw which Dell contains the description of method discovery and execute. Let's try a classic one XML attack called XML external entity or XXE. We will try to read file from the SAP operating system. 
hard drive. Uh, we inject a full as request entity and hope to get an error containing the context file of the file called passwords.txt. And if this happens, the file is successfully read and inserted into, into the request, then the pass crashes, which with an error, error returns the result of its work, including the text of the file. This vulnerability can be used to read the file, conduct Daniel service attacks, as well as uh, server-side request forgery attack, and so on. Another example of this attack on the lab server through XML and MDX, we show them on the other popul popular OLAP server called Pentaho. Pentaho OLAP server also open source solution. We found a lot of Pentaho OLAP services in the internet, so any can use a Google Doc, which we showed on previous slides, to find this OLAP server. Pentaho transfers the request into the cube as XML into JSON and calls this technique MQL. That's how Pentaho looks for the end users. Again, HTML5 interface with when user can easily create a request. And this slide shows how it looks request to a lab server in Sniffer in query parameter specifies the MQL request which contains XML. And again, we found XXE there. Let's show the attack. Attacker wants to read file one.txt from the OLAP server. He specified a request, an external document type XML, which is located on their web server. In our example, it's one.xml. This doc type file contains the two external entities, one which point to the file from the OLAP server, one.txt, and another one which point to the attacker server and contain information from the first entity as request by load. After that, attacker sent MQL request with external doc type to the lab server. When the, when the server uh, parse request, he read MQL, find XML, find external doc type, find first entity, read, for, read file one.txt, find second entity, and after that make the request which contain information from the file to the attacker server. As a result, attacker got file one.txt content. And again, uh, Pentaha OLAP server have a little feature his uh, hello, and he uh, was uh, logging a database user and password into log file. You can just read log file and get. Base 64. As always. Yeah. Base 64 secure. Uh, in, in the end, I would like uh, to mention all the classic attacks which are also possible thanks to lack of data filtration in MDX. MDX is frequently used in various web reports, so potential attacker can use an MDX query to transport. For example, JavaScript payload or maybe uh, SQL payload. It is possible because a lot of developers forget to filter data in MDX, or maybe they just don't want to. Uh, a, good, a good example is a popular OLAP server called Panorama, which once served as the basis uh, for the similar product for, by Microsoft. There is a typical query for taking a data sample out of Cube in Panorama OLAP server. There is not true select statement, but if you look closely, there are section in the query which is responsible for dimensions, rows and columns. It means that an attacker can try to inject MDX operators in the sections too. You can also see on this slide that the attacker can easily use JavaScript code in place of cube names or member names. The code will successfully pass the filter and will be executed in the current domain content context. Thus, MDX is the same battlefield for most no attacks and especially for web relevant attacks. And conclusion, blah, blah, blah. To sum up, MDX is a very popular language in business intelligence and is the main query language which used to retrieving data from InfoCubes and OLAP servers as whole. Uh, it does not have decent alternative now 
MDX assembly as SQL a lot, uh, but there are a lot of difference both in semantics and in syntaxes. Moreover, the developers of business in intelligence applications have forgotten about security from some reasons. You know, they send along all data sampled queries without any filtering. Vulnerabilities and error in MDX query processing can lead to dire consequence uh, like uh, data stealing, file reading, privilege escalation, uh, remote code execution, um, various uh, SQL and JavaScript code injection, etc. And the, the uh, last slide, if you have a question, we will answer for that. Thank you for erasing our bad language. <laughs> Uh, if you are using Microsoft uh, analysis services or SAS analysis services, you can correct uh, config server correctly and all attacks will be mitigated. If you are using Pentaho or ICQ, uh, the vendors still need to uh, touch some vulnerabilities and crazy features, as I think. Such as Base64, as I've said earlier. Okay. As I understand, uh, you asked about how many interfaces exposed to the web and the internet. Yes? I understand. Uh, yes, uh, Entaha uh, Business Analytics has many uh, exposed uh, web servers to the uh, on the internet that you can find with dogs. Uh, as to analysis services, there are few, and uh, you can find some IC cubes on Shadan. Uh, and uh, but uh, if you're working in site enterprise company, you will find them as insider. The web interfaces are exposed, and uh, sometimes you can execute any MDX query. So if you, they're using some um, cool MDX server or using some um, uh, third-party libs as uh, SQL query in uh, Microsoft Analysis Server, this will have bad consequences for the company. Okay. Can you a bit louder, please? Or use Microsoft. Yeah. We don't use any uh, closed source uh, tools to attack them. We use uh, Burp Suite that's open source. You can use it too. Only just uh, Burp Suite and Notepad, nothing else. You need to attack MDX. What happens with automated attack, like, let's say, Zap or any one of these tools that are open source, WPA, open source, and they have payloads for process containers, do they have payloads for MDX, which can transfer? Sorry. Maybe you can answer our new question a little bit later. Yeah, sure. In core. Any other questions? Maybe in near future we will add uh, functionality to a ERP scan to scan it for index injections and more. It uh, will be a month, two or three months maybe, I think. No question. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much again. Thank you.